Scene 3. Enter Hamlet, Rosencrantz, and Guildenstern. Thy pace, I pray thee slow, thy pace for but a moment now. I cannot keep up with thee. Tell me, good Rosencrantz, shall we proceed to bring our Guildenstern for amblings these of midnight if he doth continue <laughs> to so hinder our escape from kitchens and from cooks? I think he be too slow afoot. Aye, <laughs> Hamlet. And this posture now he doth impose on us of a misshaped man, oh, of bent and broken slave, or oh, vomit filled drunk whore. Oh, tis unbecoming, and shall not encourage maidens young to flock to us. May storms or plagues now take thee both, I pray. Oh, young prince, forsooth I warrant antics thine shall yet be. Timely death of us. Come, man. Didst thou not mark the cook, that when his only candle was extinguished by myself, he did so start and squeal and fall with shock of cur that's kicked and turbulence of an old maid whose first encounter with a man is fondled in the marketplace? Yet surely that alone tis worth the weight of antics mine for <laughs> all eternity. And didst thou mock his blind attempt to find us, thieves? So shaking hands of his, so trembling thus, could not but find his towering pots on high, escaped we did with cake and wine of his. Methinks the grandest of the pots did fall on head of his, for well of his, as our escape was made, doth make me think it so. This wine, I pray, be centuries old, for sure tis worth needs be the worth of venture hours. The cake is so. If wine be not to the great standards of thy delicate, soft lips. Methinks that Hamlet be the boldest of all princes, dukes, and lords, for certain now, as I do fear the wrath of cooks, when food of theirs be stolen thus, for dishes here are not so easily made, nor easily lost. Thou shouldst not speak of bold till thou shalt see of it. But come now, Rosencrantz, and my good Guildenstern, Pray tell me of the tales of women thine, whilst I be gone to school in Wittenberg, for Wittenberg's women be lacking some existence. Thus, this time and season, I am lacking manhood mine. If tales of women be what thou desires, then tales of women thou shalt now receive. Let me be the first, for he shall please to hear the tale of last week's servant mine. A goodly tale, but ne'er near as pleasing as mine tale of my good mother's last month's maid. Enter Gertrude's maiden. I shall hear both in soon good time, but I now do feel the green-eyed monster doth so gnaw the innards deep of stomach mine. So till a tale of mine I can attain, we shall delay these stories here till Eve's maturity increases to daylight. Dost thou believe that ere daylight approach thou can so end thy season celibate? How canst thou question Hamlet's talent, sir? His absence long in Wittenberg has left thy memory dry dull and lacking truth. But stand aside whilst I do practice art that's till this eve left much neglected by my leave. Good and fair maiden, what brings thou from mother's company on stormy night? Good and good, prince. The storm has cost my mistress dear to toss and turn ere sleep can find its way onto her lids. Thus drink I bring her now to aid pursuit of hers for goodly rest that she may be in full high spirits for tomorrow's feast for thee. Tell me, fair maiden, dost thou love thy queen? Aye, my lord, as any servant loves a queen. A proper answer, rightly spoken thus, but I do think thou liest, forsooth. Tis but well known that mother mine is wont to shriek and bear much suffering unto such ones, her maidens most, who bring impatience to her day. An honest answer for thy prince, I pray, for tis a blindness to o'erlook the faults of family for family's sake, and whilst my mother graciously did bear my infant self, for which I am indeed much grateful, faults of hers do come as drops from sky, in much supply, and frequently. Perhaps she can be wont to sometimes rage at smallest inconveniences. Ye faith, I did once cough at morning prey of hers, and then received such verbal cuts from tongue of hers that dignity of mine didst bleed across the chapel's floor. So vicious were remarks of hers for days on end. In faith, surprise doth not succeed to find its way to mood of mine. For thy short tale reminds me thus of my young years when I discovered new mischiefs to enjoy. Thy days must be much long and tiring, for fear of soon o'erstepping wishes of thy queen, 
such secret wishes that she be too lackadaisical to wear a lake to thee. Tis sometimes tiresome and drains mine blood and bone of life and readiness, till next day's morning's brief aloneness I am so permitted then. Tell me, fair maiden, now, art thou yet married, or art soon to be? Not yet, my lord. Tis so. What fools men are to let thee slip through fingers theirs for past long years now. Verily, they be blind fools. What thou needst to alleviate thy mood for days of long before they come is to withhold some power of thine or own queen of ours. Some truth or past event that when my mother doth so rail again at thee, the secret of thy mind can laugh and smile and wink and whisper thus, What fool is here? A humorous thought, but truly no such truth nor past event is found nor can e'er be. Perhaps tis so, perhaps tis not so so. Perhaps some bravery or trickery shall be required of thee to give desires as these their form and shape. I find myself committed now to aid thy life, for my good mother's character would be improved to much extent if fellows all were not so keen to grovel to the whims of hers. Good prince, such generosity is much appreciated by myself a faith, but thinketh I that actions thus indeed have been necessary not at all, for I, despite these minor inconveniences, am grateful much for present station mine, for tis much better than my mother's was, and mother's hers before and fathers, too. Come, come. What can be done so easily to ease the pains of fellow creatures on this earth by those more fortunate in life? All people should make pains to undertake. A thing that did consistently incite vexation for my mother when was I, in youth, I did acquaint myself with some such maidens of a lower stature than mine own, and shirk such conversations with the women of a royal heritage to match a prince for such behavior that apparently, apparently, be gross. Whilst thought a vexing queen of ours may cause my lips and teeth to quiver now, tis not a risk I can allow to lose my work in my position that I slaved for years to now attain. No risk, nor any risk commences this. We shall not know ourselves within her line of sight nor range of sound, but in most private places shall we know the each of other's hour. And thus mightst thou maintain thy station and delight in those infuriating moments with thy queen. But come, what sayest thee? If it be my lord's wish. Tis not for me, nor wish is mine, but thine. And for thy pleasures now. To go but first, relate to me the whereabouts of chamber thine. It lies beside my mistresses, between her chamber and her bath. <laughs> Thus is, beside and so between the two. Well, this doth increase delight of ours, that they're so close to sleeping in her bathing we shall soon exchange our wits, or mine alone, if you be tired much by arduous long day. Go to, go to, I'll come for thee but soon. <laughs> My gentlemen, the liberty to name me bold is thine. Prescribe what titles as thy wilt, for I embrace them all. Oh, my prince, such trickery twould rile Lucifer to envious rage. For what thou hast achieved, thou didst without a serpent's guise. Thou art as bold as any angel who would face our heaven's God with personal dispute. Hamlet, dear, O oh, brother mine, thou art as bold as Theseus on Crete. For thou hast slayed a minotaur of odds with charms and quips, whilst lacking sword of Aegeus. <laughs> this does not do thy boldness justice now. O prince, thou art as bold as Hercules, for wit, and not particular great strength, nor lion's skin, nor club of such great weight, hast given thee these golden apples now, <laughs> and overcome the hydra of men's strife. Nay, 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 tis still not so. Hamlet, prince, thou art as bold as Moses with his staff against the pharaoh Ramses and his will. Although no frogs nor locust swarms do aid thy staff's pursuit for freedom of people. Thy, thy allegories do increase in depth into the farthest reaches of thy mind's imagination, Gildenstern. I'll say it true. 
Thou art more bold than father thine against one Fortinbra on Norway's field, who made defeat of him upon his horse. Do feign to make comparisons of father mine to me. I like it not. Nay, I will set the truest course of it. Thou art as bold as one who takes the Lord's good book and then extracts two characters at random. Say, perhaps, Noah and Jonah too, and uses then his own imagination to then put them both into a work of fiction of his own, regardless of their individual set times or place or any circumstance. Come, come, I must to chambers hers, ere she doth sleep or she renege this course of ours. I'll tell thee all ere we do meet again. Good night, sweet prince. Take pleasure in the time. Come, Gildenstern, let us not waste this rain's good music for our sleep. I follow you. <laughs> 